Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Friday morning here in Australia. It is New Year's Eve, so 24 hours time. We'll be in 2022, and I think in some regards, a lot of us will be happy to leave 2021 uh, 20, uh, behind with you know all the you know pandemic sort of stuff that's happened. But look, I, I want to look at some of the upsides of 2021, and have a look at this year to date. So we're going to get into this very shortly, but first of all, mark it up ever so slightly. $2.26 trillion, so a small little gain, but again, we keep going sort of up and then going down and we're all over the place. Bitcoin dominance still just hovering just under 40%. Volume is down, so obviously money was being taken out. Bitcoin price now under $47,000, but look, only just announced just above, so there you go. And gas prices around about $12, so they dropped down for a while. Now people are kind of in and out of the market and all over the place. So what I want to look at is here, look, the last month really has been horrible. I mean, look, you can go down. It's basically, you know, near 20% on average losses almost across the board. But there, there are a couple of exceptions that have done okay. But 20%, 30%, 15%, you know, you name it. And you can just keep going down the top 100 and it hasn't been great. Now we go back in the last 24 hours, things are sort of okay, we've had a little bit of a bounce, but it's easy to get caught up in this kind of short-term stuff. Like the last month, yeah, not great. Last 24 hours, it's a little bit of a bounce back, but you know, maybe we continue to go lower. But let's have a look at the year to date. If you invested in in Bitcoin in January 1st this year, you've almost doubled your money. Ethereum, you've five x your money. Binance coin, you've 13 x your money. The dollar, you're still at about 11.11%, uh, but that's not including deflation. So again, we all know that you're down. Solana, 11,000%. ADA, 600. XRP, 252%. Luna, nearly 13,000%. DOT, 4 x your money. I mean, AVAX, you know, 33 x your money. SHIB. Good Lord, if you invested in SHIB this time last year, you are up unbelievable amounts of money, you know. And, you know, you just go down the list. This is cryptocurrencies. So, yes, it's easy to get caught up in the short term, the daily, the weekly, even the monthly sometimes. But have a look at the yearly. I mean, Litecoin not doing that well. Uh, hence why I've been getting out of my Litecoin position. Now, I was lucky I made some okay profits with it, and I have a little bit of Litecoin left as a moon bag, but it just hasn't been doing well enough. It hasn't got the adoption that I was looking for. But hey, I'm never offering you financial advice. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. you got to make your own mind up. But again, look, going down near protocol, 11 extra money. You know, Bitcoin Cash not doing so great, hence why I don't hold any Bitcoin Cash. I mean, man, have a look at that. 39 times your money. Axie Infinity, I mean, 1,600 times your money or something like that. This is in a year, ladies and gentlemen. V-Chain, you forex your money. You just keep going down the list. You know, Phantom, good Lord, you know, 1,200 times your money. And you just keep going down. That's why we're in cryptocurrency. This is what you need to look at. The, you know, the longer term basis. Too many people come here and they hear about these kind of gains and they think, I'm doing this in the next couple of days, weeks, maybe even a couple of months. You're lucky if you can do that in that kind of time. That's what it really is. But year to date, you know, you hang out here for three, four, five years and you're in good projects. I mean, these gains will be minor. They really will be. You come back in four or five years time, if these coins are still going around in good projects, this is going to be exponential yet again. And I'm not saying any particular coin like, you know, Aave, nice. Uh, you know, and when it was Aave old uh, lend, uh, it's even more. So that's what you need to look at. Look at the year to date. I mean, good Lord, engine coin, nice. Curve, nice. Quant, nice. I mean, it's just, you know, hundreds if not thousands of percent gains on coins almost across the board right through the top 100. I mean, look at that, Ecomi, wow, 15, you know, 15,000% up. I mean, good Lord. That is what you need to look at, ladies and gentlemen, these longer term time frames. But also you need to remember that unfortunately, a lot of these coins that are really popular now in this bull run probably won't be in the next one. That's just the way crypto has been going. You really need to keep an eye on these. You know, I'm not 
saying Solana is not going to be. Let's just say Solana, for instance, maybe it's had its run, and all of a sudden in the next bull run, it becomes like NEO. NEO was massive. It was like one of the IT coins. EOS, one of the IT coins. And unfortunately, and I'm not saying Solana, it just was an example. It could be any of these coins, Luna, Dot, who knows, doing amazing now in four years' time. If these you know four-year cycles play out, and I personally think they are sort of already broken as well, they can still be extending though, so that doesn't mean that these can't disappear. But just be careful and remember to take some profits. And hence why I never put too much money into any altcoin. I'm not saying I don't put, you know, a reasonable amount in, but I don't bet huge on any altcoin. I bet huge, well, you know, my idea of huge, on Bitcoin and then Ethereum. I was lucky it's done so well again, 400%. I'm up more than 400% because I've been in for basically sort of two years now nearly. Uh, I mean, I've been in longer since 2017, but I really bought that dip back in uh, March 2020. Uh, and my percentage gains is uh, a lot more than 400%. And like always, you only wish you had to put in more. You had, you wish you had to bet the house on it, but you know that's life. And please, never financial advice. And my personal advice is, don't bet the house on it. Do not do that. You know, go and get some financial advice if you don't know what to do. Uh, and particularly looking out for altcoins. But again, look at these gains. You are not going to go to the stock market and find these kind of gains. You're just not. Whew. That's why I'm in crypto, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you have made, you know, taken advantage of a number of these gains, and particularly if you, you know, got on the ones that were, you know, like, you know, going into the thousands of percent. Uh, that is quite nice. Where's Matic? How's that done? Yeah, there we go, thirteen thousand uh, percent. I've been in Matic for over a year, and I was lucky enough to buy it at sort of two cents, two cents, three cents, five cents, and eight cents. I think on my. Uh, big major buys and very similar with ADA. I mean, ADA I was buying at about two cents, three cents, and eight cents. That's where my big buys were. I've bought more since, but that's where my big buys were. And I'm just not sure we'll ever see it back down at those prices again. So I've taken some profits from all of them. Like I said, I, I realigned, uh, reevaluated. What's the word I used? I can't remember now. But anyway, uh, I took some profits and made sure I had cash sitting on the side. I can't think of the word now, having a total mind blank. Uh, had to yeah, realign, reevaluate, I forget what it is, readjust uh, my portfolio. So I took some profits and I did take some from ADA and from Bitcoin and Ethereum and all sorts of things. And it was just to make sure I have enough cash sitting on the side. Should we ever have a legitimate another bear market and things go down to crazy prices and then I can take advantage of those. But again, have a look at this. This is what you need to focus on year to date. And look, even more so, three, four, five, ten year to date. See where they're at. Because this is good now. They will be exponentially more in that time provided you're in the right projects. But try not to get caught up in this monthly, daily, weekly stuff. Now, we always look at the daily for sure, because particularly here, I mean, I do daily videos, so we need to look at that. But it's easy to get caught up in that and forget about this. So let's have a look. All right, Bitcoin, here we are. It has fallen back down into this falling uh, falling wedge. Now, they can be bullish. Unless we're in a bear market, then they can be only short-term bullish, and then it just goes bearish again. But again, my personal opinion is we're still in a bull market. We're just having a corrective phase. So we're back in here. So I don't know where this is going to fall. Uh, and again, this is really what I'm kind of looking at, 32 and a half-ish sort of thousand dollars. That's the last real kind of CME gap other than when we're going down into the single digits, which I don't know if we'll ever see that again. So I wouldn't be surprised if this uh, gets uh, closed in the not too distant future. But again, I'm not going to harp on this. I've spoke about it for a while. You know, if it doesn't happen, I'm, I'm not worried. I would much rather it go up than come down uh, and close there. My bank, you know, my bank balance will look a lot better with the upside. But anyway, again, easy to get caught up in this daily stuff. Looks bad and it's like, oh God, imagine what it's going to look like if we come down to here. It's going to be horrible. All right, well, let's zoom out a little bit. What about weekly? Weekly's not looking so bad. I mean, it does look like we're starting to kind of move up a little bit, sitting ever so slightly higher lows. We've set in some lower highs, 
but the lows have still been getting higher ever so slightly. I mean, you can go into there and this one's a little bit higher than that one and that one's a little bit higher than this one and the week is getting ready to end. So it's not that bad really at all when you look at it on the weekly. All right, well, let's go to the monthly. Have a look at the monthly. It doesn't look that bad at all. We haven't even set in a lower monthly. We would need to go below, what are we gonna say? That is around about there below 42,000 before we can really you know worry about it being too bearish but even then we can set in a new low and maybe again come down to sort of you know this 33 ish thousand dollar mark and then start to move up from there but what we also need to keep and can consider is the fair value price you know based on this and this is a rough estimate is still around twenty four thousand dollars so we are sort of oversold a little bit in those terms, but it's not to say we can't go much higher. So again, if you are just getting into crypto right now, simply dumping all your money into crypto, considering really the fair value price is around about $24,000, wouldn't be a good idea. Average in, you know, weekly, put a little bit in. Next week, put in a little bit more. Next week, put in a little bit more and so on and so on. Just in case we do continue to come down, you haven't thrown it all in at, you know, 40, sort of six to $47,000 and it drops all the way down to, you know, $26,000, that would hurt. You would have averaged in and then as it starts to go back up, you suddenly get exponential rises in your balance. All right, just a couple of stories I wanna focus on. Close to 50 million in Bitcoin has moved from 2011 for the first time in 10.5 years. This could be slightly bearish, maybe. Again, someone is getting ready to make a big sell. But look, whales do this kind of stuff to manipulate the markets as well. And whales are miners as well. Miners hold a lot of Bitcoin. They really are whales. So just because this is moving doesn't mean the market's about to dump, but it is an indication that it might. So just keep that in mind. But again, they move things, you know, and this could be uh, OTC. So it might not even have anything to do with the market. It could be an OTC buy, so it won't affect the market at all. Even though it's possibly been sold, the market is not going to tank. But unless that person buys some of this, you know, $50 million worth of Bitcoin and then dumps some of them, some of that on the market. So we'll just have to wait and see. And again, I'm just bringing it to you, you're bringing it to your attention so you're mindful of it. Not that I think you should rush out and, you know, do make any major uh you know, transactions based on this. And again, I've got to clarify, I'm never offering you financial advice. It's always just my personal opinion, but keep an eye out for what the market might do. Because if there is a dump, for me, I plan on buying it. Now, again, I'm not throwing all my money in, but if it dips down to 42,000, I'm, you know, a little bit over 42,000, I'm going to buy some. If it dips down to, you know, 33-ish thousand dollars, 34-ish thousand dollars, I'm buying some. And if it dips down to 24,000, 22,000, I'm buying some. I'm just not gonna to go too crazy. As I said before in my last videos, I was too aggressively buying the dips and buying into sort of some of the pumps. I just didn't have enough cash sitting on the side. So I won't make that mistake, but I will constantly average in. But again, keep an eye out for this. It may be nothing, it may be something. Micro strategy, I mean, you know, Michael Saylor, he just does not stop, yeah buys another $94 million worth of Bitcoin as it dips down to, as it was dipping around 49, well, not dipping, it's below that now, but it did dip down from 69, but at 49,000. So he doesn't mind buying it at really kind of, I won't say any price because he's not buying it at all time highs. He is buying the dips, but he's not trying to pick the exact bottom. So he now has another 100 and 1,000, sorry, and 1,914 Bitcoin. I mean, most of us would love to own just one Bitcoin and MicroStrategy bought 1,900 of them. So well done to MicroStrategy, but again, he is going to be, con he is considered some of the smart money at the moment. We'll have to see how that plays out in, you know, decades to come. But they do say follow the smart money, and if he's happy to keep buying it at the moment, you know, maybe you and I should. Uh, like I said, I'm still dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin. I pretty much always am. It's just when it's at discounts, I like to put a lot more into it. When it's at all-time highs, I like to put a little bit less into it. Uh, and again, at the moment, I'm not focusing on really too much else other than Bitcoin and a, a bit of Ethereum. And because Ethereum, I need to see Ethereum 2.0 before I can really start to put a whole lot more money into uh, my, a whole lot more money into Ethereum 
because that is really the kind of the telltale sign for me. I think if it can do ETH 2.0 nice and not too many hiccups, then it really does become one of my sort of long-term, uh, it already is a long-term hold, but whether it becomes one of my long-term buying strategies like Bitcoin, that's what I'm waiting for. All right, last but not least, so some bored apes were stolen and it was from a collector who said he got done in a phishing attack. So ladies and gentlemen, please be careful. Don't click on random links and things like that, like ever, I don't care what it is. If you hear about something, go to the actual website. Make sure you've got some, you know, some kind of, you know, protection on the computer that'll let you know if it thinks you're going to a sus website and things like that. You know, do a Google search of, uh, uh, and a review by it and things like that. Look for all those kind of things. But any links, you know, especially being sent to your phones and random emails and that, do not click on it. Uh, you know, some of these links can be very, you know, they can look like they're from your bank and things like that. You just got to be oh so careful. Just go to the source. Like if you get some, you know, again, from your bank, some email saying, oh, you got to do something for your bank, blah, blah, blah. Okay, no worries. Keep that in mind, go to the actual website that you should have saved somewhere, and if it then says to do that from there, then you know it was legit, but at least you went to the actual website. But be very careful of all the phishing attacks. You know, there's so many things out there at the moment, you know, trying to steal, you know, your money, your crypto, your identities, and all the rest of it, you need to be very careful. But what's good is OpenSea Market have blocked it. So they have actually frozen the NFTs and I'm sure this person is now going to have to prove that a phishing attack was happened and then they will hopefully be able to get those NFTs back. But look, that's part of the things that are good about centralized entities. So because OpenSea is centralized, they can go ahead and do that. Otherwise, it'd have to be put to a vote by everyone. That can take a lot of time and then things can be moved and all the rest of it. Uh, and then taken back and sold somewhere else. So, you know, we all talk about, oh, we don't want any of these centralized things. Some things actually work better being centralized. I would agree that most things are probably better decentralized. And maybe we can still have centralized, uh, be able to do things similar to centralized uh, entities like this through a decentralized platform. But it's just whether we can do it fast enough. And, you know, there's going to be, have to be some rules and things put in place. We'll have to wait and see. But hopefully if this is legit, because Bored Apes, I mean, they are worth a lot of money at the moment. Uh, there we go. There's $1.9 million worth of Bored Apes right there. Hopefully this person can get them back if they were in fact stolen. All right. They're the stories that I wanted to just have a look at. There's really not going to be a lot, you know, probably for the... I'd say maybe the next week or two, I think kind of mid-ish January, I think, you know, things will start to fire up. People come back from holidays and things like that. Now, I'm not saying the market can't fire up uh, in, in before then. I just think news stories are going to be fairly slow. They usually are from Christmas till about sort of mid-January when people are taking those kind of holidays. After that, the news stories start to pick up, but the market itself could fire up at any moment. You know my thoughts on where I think the market might go, but I don't actually know where the market's going. I just have my thesis, my guesses. All right, that's it from me. Again, it is New Year's Eve here in Australia. I hope everyone has a fantastic New Year's Eve, whether it's today or tomorrow, wherever you are in the world. And even better, you have an absolutely great 2022. And just remember, again, going back to here, it's easy to get caught up in the short-term stuff, even the daily and the monthly, but have a look at those yearly returns. And if we do have a bear market for crypto, they've only lasted about a year and then everything starts to pick back up again. So these could not look so pretty for a while, but again, wait to see these in five years time, in 10 years time. That's why I'm in crypto. I don't know about you. Have a great new year. Hopefully you're on that game train, but if you aren't, don't worry too much. This is where the big money's made in the longer term, not the shorter term. All right, I'll see you next time.